Hey guys, I know you clicked on this video to watch an in-depth test and review on the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus, but I do want to apologize up front and say sorry for the number of times I will call this product incorrectly in this video. I didn't really notice it while I was shooting. It was only when I was editing that I, con that I realized I was continuously and repeatedly calling it wrongly. So again, I'm very, very sorry. But yeah, this is the review on the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus. In this video, I'm doing a review on this guy, the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus. This microphone was sent to us by our friends over at Gadget Master PH. Gadget Master is an online seller here in the Philippines for brand new and secondhand camera gear. And I actually recently just purchased my brand new Sony A7 III, which I'm using right now to shoot this video on, together with the 28 to 70 millimeter kit lens from them. And they're the real deal. They're over in Facebook, so I'll leave a link down in the description box below so you can go check them out just in case you're you might be looking for some new gear so fyi gadget master isn't paying me to do this review so no i'm not making any money out of it at all they only ask that i mentioned that they were the ones who sent this unit over and other than that i was really just excited for the opportunity to do so Rode is a household name when it comes to microphones and they're arguably the most recognizable brand in the market today. That's why it's super common to see YouTubers, content creators, vloggers, both big and small use this microphone. And I don't know about you, but every time I see someone with a camera and a Rode mic on top of it, they just automatically seem more legit content creators or vloggers to me. And that being said, I've never really owned a Rode mic before. And that's why I found this opportunity to be too good to let it pass. I'm about to return the microphone to them, so I decided to make this video to share with you what I found out and my experiences with it for the one week that I had to play around with this. Alright, so today we're gonna do a real world test of the Rode Video Micro Plus, and I'm going to use it on my Sony A6400, and we're gonna go for a bit of a walk outside to see how well this mic performs in outdoor conditions. So, let's go. First, I need to find my keys. Found it. So I don't normally vlog, but today's a special episode, so we're gonna do this. I'm actually pretty nervous. I'm gonna check first if someone is outside. There's someone out there, so... I'm gonna have to wait for a little bit. <laughs> Alright, close this here, so we're going. So we're gonna go to the pool area. Mm. I'm just adjusting the ND filter. Here. So there are two reasons I decided to do this here. One is because it's windy, uh, which I think is going to be a good... Um, they got going! Good test for the mic to see how well it will uh, deflect the wind noise and of course there are kids playing around so we also want to see how well it will isolate my voice versus the other kids around and if you can't tell already I'm pretty <laughs> anxious and uneasy about this whole exercise uh, I don't really vlog out in public and this is kind of the first time I'm doing it so again this is the mic test for the Rode Video Micro Plus on just the standard settings and with the Sony camera, with my Sony camera set to a recording level of 10. So mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three, mic test. So right now I'm pretending that I'm going somewhere super interesting. And so today I'm gonna show you the amazing playground. This is a mic test for the onboard microphone of the Sony A6400. As you can see, I'm holding the camera just at an arm's length. and not, It's not really stretched out. It's, I'm just holding it comfortably at this distance. And the current audio level, audio gain settings on the microphone is at 15. 
auto that we achieve or were to level off negative 12 dB. So now we are doing the test on the Rode Video Micro Plus which is a very popular shotgun mic used by a lot of YouTubers and content creators. The current audio internal audio gain of the camera is still set to 1. The microphone is just at its standard settings meaning there's no audio gain. The high pass filter isn't turned on as well so we are recording at an arm's length and I'm looking at the audio recording level on the camera and it's registering perfectly to just about negative 12 dB. Right off the bat just after turning this my camera on and the microphone on it just recorded perfectly on these on this specific type of situation. So another cool feature of the mic of the Rode Video Micro Plus is the high pass filter and right now there's a helicopter passing by so you'll probably, I, I'm, I'm very interested to see how how it will register with the microphone but right now the high pass filter is set to 75 to see how much we can, how much that was lessened and what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna try and do and turn up the high pass filter to 150 which we're gonna do right now. Okay so now the Rode Video Micro Plus is turned on to 150, the high pass filter on the Rode Video Micro Plus is turned to 150 there's a trough rumbling behind me so we'll see how how much how much less noise it's picking up right now so again for further for better comparison i'm going to turn the high pass filter off again so right now it's just the standard settings high pass filter is off the trough is just right behind me over here and we'll try to see how much of that noise is being picked up Next, I'm going to turn on high pass filter to 75. Now the high pass filter is turned on to 75. Um, we'll see how much better it sounds like. Drop is still right behind us. And the next thing we're going to do is turn on high pass filter to 150. So again, so now the high pass filter is up to us to 150. The truck is still behind me, so hopefully it sounds so much better. It's cutting more of the traffic behind and the truck just just here. So we'll see later in post. Okay, so right now we have the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus attached directly onto the Sony A7 III. And I'm still just about one meter, less than one meter away from the camera. And the camera's internal gain is set to 16 while the microphone is just on its standard settings and this is how it sounds like. Mic test 1 to 3, mic test 1 to 3. Now what I want to do next is to try and step further away from the camera to see how that will sound like. So I'm taking 1, 2, 3, 4 steps away from the camera and this is how it sounds like. Mic test 1 to 3, mic test 1 to 3. So I'm again now just about 3 meters, 4 meters away from the camera and the camera and the microphone's audio gain is set to plus 20 dB and this is how it sounds like. Mic test 1, 2, 3, mic test 1, 2, 3. So right now we have the high pass filter set to 75, it's still at plus 20 dB and we're still 3 to 4 meters away from the camera and this is how it sounds like. Mic test 1, 2, 3, mic test 1, 2, 3. Alright, so now we turned up high pass filter to 150 and the audio gain is still at plus 20 dB and this is how it sounds like. Mic test 1, 2, 3, mic test 1, 2, 3. The next feature I'd like to test on this microphone is the high pass filter. Now the Rode Video Micro Plus comes with two high pass filter settings, a 75 and a 150 level and a high pass filter is basically used to cut off well, according to the manual, it's used to cut up low frequency noises like rumbling of air conditioning or hums and uh, of uh, similar sounds. So I'm gonna try and find uh, and put myself in a position in a situation like that to see how well this high pass filter will perform. Let's go. It's just me casually vlogging like I always do. <laughs> <laughs> There's any air conditioning right here, so maybe I could try that. 
So I'm standing right beside an air conditioning unit and I'm gonna turn on the high pass filter. Level 75 first. Now it's on at level 75. So mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three. Um, we're gonna see how well it cuts off on the air conditioning. Someone's coming out. I'm pretty ashamed. <laughs> so I'm gonna come back to that air conditioning unit in a bit. Okay, so there's considerably less people around here in the lobby. It took quite a while because I really couldn't <laughs> be talking to the camera while there were lots of people beside me. But right now, we are at the lobby and I'm sitting here because right behind me is a tall air conditioning unit which um, you, you may or may, again, you may or may not hear depending on the recording. So right now it's just the standard settings and the high pass filter isn't on. And what I'm gonna do now is turn on the first level of the high pass filter, which is at 75. So now the high pass filter is at level 75 and we're trying to see how how much better the microphone, uh, the audio will sound with the microphone, with the air conditioning directly behind me. So mic test. One, two, three, mic test. One, two, three, mic test. One, two, three. So right now, high pass filter is at 150, and we're trying to see how how much better the audio is gonna sound. I mean, with with this feature on, I mean, the air conditioning isn't particularly loud to begin with, but so it will be interesting to see how much better the audio quality is. So mic test. One, two, three, mic test. One, two, three. We're doing a bass recording for audio using just the onboard microphone, the Sony A7 III, which is the camera I'm shooting on right now. And it's it's currently right in front of me. We have an, uh, an electric fan running just over there. I don't know if you can see that. And the air conditioning is also turned on just so we will see, just so we can see how well the Rode, Micro, Rode Video Micro Plus will perform later on when we attach it to this camera right here it's pretty close and the camera's internal gain is set to about uh, 22 so that we achieve a recording level of around negative 12 dB so this is how it sounds okay so now we have the Rode Video Micro Plus attached and plugged directly onto the Sony a7 III over here so it's currently just on standard settings there's no audio gain and the high pass filter isn't on and now the camera the internal gain of the camera of the a7 III is set to just around 10 and we are currently getting a recording level of around negative 12 db which is where we want to be so this is how it sounds like mic test one two three mic test so now we have the rode video micro pro plus set uh, with the high pass filter on at 75 Mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three. This is the mic test for the Rode Video Micro Pro, Rode Video Micro Pro Plus with the high pass filter set to 75. So now we have the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus um, with the high pass filter set to 150. And this is how it sounds like. Mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three. All right, so now we have the Sony A7 III set to about one meter in front of us and towards that direction um, and its internal gain is set to about uh, 25 so that we get a recording level of negative 12 dB so this is how it sounds like mic test one two three mic test one two three so now we have the Rode Video Micro Plus connected onto the Sony A7 III with just the standard settings and we have the internal gain of the micro of the camera to 
above 21, which is still pretty high, so that we get a recording level of negative 12 dB as I see on the monitor. So this is how it sounds like. Mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three. So now what we did is we turned on the plus 20 dB audio gain on the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus because the camera is set further away to try and get more of the sound. So this is the mic test for the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus with plus 20 dB turned on at about 1 meter well, when it's about 1 meter away from you alright so this time around with, with the plus 20 dB gain still on we turned on the high pass filter and set it to 75 the internal gain of the camera is still at 22 to achieve a recording level of negative 12 dB this is how it sounds like so mic test one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three. So now the high pass filter of the microphone is set to 150. Camera is still one meter away in front of us. Internal gain of the, of the camera, internal audio gain of the camera is still set to 22. And this is how it sounds like. So mic test, one, two, three, mic test, one, two, three. On the high pass filter, to be honest, I couldn't really hear much of a difference between 75 and 150 if there was any. However, you do hear it when you set versus just the standard settings and 150. The noise from air conditioning and idling vehicles are indeed greatly reduced, especially since I was listening to these recordings using a good pair of headphones. However, it doesn't really help out with the wind noise and that's why I think you still need a dead cat versus just the wind foam on if you're planning to do lots of outdoor stuff with this. In the indoor tests, it was pretty much the same thing. However, setting it at 150 really did help get rid of the air conditioning noise in the background. Now, it might not seem too much when you're just listening to the raw audio, but I assume it will be very helpful later on when you bring the audio in post. So I'd say leave the HPF filter on at 150 all the time since it does work anyway. I do also want to say and put out a disclaimer that I'm not an audio guy, so take this with a grain of salt. Next, distance matters. Keep in mind that I didn't do any kind of post-processing on the, any of the video and audio tests that we did because I wanted you guys to have a raw and real world usage and application of the microphone. Now admittedly, listening back and watching these clips, I think I could have raised the internal gain of the camera a little bit higher to get a uh, negative 12 dB recording level because some of them were really way be below that. But it was super windy that day and I was really a little bit afraid to raise the internal audio gain because it I might clip the recording. Second, you'll notice that the audio quality of the recording sounded so much better when the camera and the microphone were as close to me as possible. It didn't matter even if I had the plus 20 dB turned on when I stepped away or, or when I was further from the camera. Sound quality suffers the further you are away from the microphone. And that's not to say that the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus is a bad microphone. I'm sure any shotgun microphone would have performed the same way if not even if not possibly even worse this just means that you really need to get your microphone as close to you as possible and it won't matter even if you have an expensive piece of gear like the rode video micro pro plus if the if it's really just too far away Overall, I really enjoyed using the Rode Video Micro Pro Plus. I know it's not as cheap as some of the other shotgun microphones out there, but they do come with some extra features that none of them have. And I really find the safety channel, for example, safety channel feature, for example, to be very, very useful and helpful, especially if you're someone who makes money out of making films. I mean, I think the cost of this microphone is going to be significantly cheaper than if you were to watch an entire project completely because of bad audio. I am actually a little bit sad that I'm going to be returning this microphone already because I did have lots of fun using it. Anyways, like I said, this was sent to us by our friends over at Gadget Master PH and you can check them out with the links down in the description box below. Now, if you have any questions and if you think you found this video to be helpful, please let me know in the comment section down below too. That would mean a lot. Leave a like if you'd like this video and consider subscribing if you haven't already. I guess I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.